Hey guys, welcome back to Doodling with Purpose. We're getting real close to graduation day at episode 200, right around the corner. But that means we got to make sure we're reading, because uh, if you're going to graduate, you got to read. So we've been looking at this Stella. Previously, we were looking at the first line. So today, well, this week, we're going to prep for reading the second line. And much as we did with the first one, we're going to look at some of the vocabulary Hopefully, it is all a reminder, and these are on your flashcards, on your notes, in your memory banks. So let's uh, do a quick dive. Remember, the first line was the offering formula, and if we know that the first line is the offering formula, that's going to follow up with what the offering formula is composed of, which, if you recall, is the voice offering. So this is another conjunction, and it's made up of different parts from different words. The first part, per, is taken from pert, um, pert, which is the verb to go out. The second part is haru, taken from haru, voice, but usually just done as the first glyph, which is pronounced haru, per being the, the first glyph, the most, is pr. And then the third one, uh, the loaf, which is pronounced, that's the uh, determinative for bread, which is pronounced t, or the full word, T with a terminative for an offering and a loaf. And then finally, beer, which is uh, hinkut. It's one of those uh, weird words where the end is uh, not actually there. So you can see all each word gives one letter. All those letters I've circled there in blue become hurt haru, the voice offering, which follows up the, uh, the offering formula. Of course, if you recall this one we did a long time ago, it's another conjunction, ne for the ka of. So ka, those arms in the middle, is pronounced ka, and then you've got an n at the top and an n at the bottom, and remember n can be either for or of. So in this case it's both, for the ka of. Would make sense of ka for. Next we have another phrase that works together, it's one of the ways to get better at reading is to recognize full phrases like this, which is why we're looking at this one. All right, so here we have everything good and pure. So let's break this up. So everything made up of two words. So we have and which you see as the first glyphs there, but it's actually in reverse order, so it's thing every. Remember that nib, nib is that weird, weird double consonant where, remember, we encountered it with the first line, it appeared before the name of a place. So before a place, it means lord. Well, before anything, it means lord. So if it comes first, it's lord, like lord of Deju, lord of Abydos, lord of my room. If nib appears after the, uh, the noun, then it's every. So in this case, you have chut, which is thing, and nib, every. So chut nib is thing, every, or in reverse hieroglyphic English, everything. So that's how you get everything there, the first two words. Then next we have nefer, which is good, it, uh, the three consonant sound, and then wa'abt, pure, another uh, determinative glyph that is used for the full phrase. So everything good and pure as kind of one phrase. And again, uh, noting that you know, well, every, it'd be thing every good and pure. Remembering also there's no words for and as well as the and a. So those words don't count as we're numbering words. All right, and next up to refresh vocabulary, we have another compound phrase here. So imchet nitchim, which literally would be lives God on, but Reverse English would be on which a god lives. So, ankh, live, then god. All right, then the offering noun. So, remembering that there are determinatives and abbreviations that are very common for these. So, here I've written out the full word as a reminder, and I'll just go one by one. That first one there is apid, bird, but it can be abbreviated with just a bird's head, especially in the offering formula. Then we have ka, ox which can be abbreviated just as the head of an ox, shis, alabaster, and uh, mincht, linen, both which also can be abbreviated. So one glyph, or just the head, 
from each full word becomes the determinative or the rather uh, shortened version of this word, especially in the offering formula. You'd expect to see this. Offering formulas are very uh, formulaic, and that's deliberate because that's why we're looking at it. All right, so next week we will, once you've refreshed with the vocabulary, go through and uh, make some words out of it. All right, study up, and I'll see you next week for more doodling with purpose.